I just wanted to start this vlog off by saying thank you to those of you that flagged up that I probably shouldn't be paying, uh, declaring my interest earnings on my universal credit claim. I kind of had it in my head that because I have to declare it on self-assessment that it counts as income, which for that purpose it does. So it's all a bit convoluted on the websites as to how you do and don't claim interest because they don't just say don't claim banking interest it's put in a different way which if I got it wrong other people my god loads of people must be getting it wrong anyway so I didn't have that as a discussion when I first signed up and had my meetings um, even though they knew I had savings that were earning interest they just don't detail it enough and it's confusing because when you do your universal claim every month and you fill in all the details, when you do your income, you just put it as one figure. So you don't itemise it. So if you're putting in the wrong thing, nobody's looking at that and seeing where you've gone wrong. But you have to itemise your expenses. So... When I go in for my meetings, they don't ask me to itemise where all that income has come from. They just look at the amount and go, oh, you're doing okay, great. And that's kind of it, really. So I've been merrily declaring my banking interest since last September. So I emailed uh, my work coach through the journal on the Universal Credit System and just said, hey, I've been told this, can you confirm if it's true or not? And she came back and said, yep, it's correct, you don't claim for, you don't put in your banking interest on your claim. And that was it. She didn't say, and this is how you get it back again if you've done it. So I've kind of, again, emailed around, and it looks like it might be possible for me to try and reclaim it, but there's no really hard and fast information. And I think it just said, email your work coach so I've emailed her back and said okay so how do I reclaim this because I've been putting this in as my income since last September so we'll wait and see what happens with that I feel like I'm in a little bit of a race against time now because I only have about two and a half just under two and a half months left before I think my universal credit claim ends because I would have done the year on the protected um, transition uh, and I don't think they're going to take me on after that. So I need to get this sorted before that. I've added up all the interest that I've declared on my claims. And it comes up to about £1,600. So I would like that money back if if I'm entitled to it. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that. Um, it's so easy to make mistakes on the system. This is the thing. It's so confusing. And it's designed to be confusing and a bit threatening and difficult to manoeuvre and I can only presume that their aim for doing that is to put people off claiming and I know from the comments here that it has put off a lot of people from claiming which means the UC doesn't have to pay out any money they don't care uh, their most important factor here is getting the numbers of claimants down as much as possible in whatever way that that is whether your claim gets turned down whether you decide you can't be bothered to navigate the system um, for whatever reason so um so it's no surprise that you know mistakes are made because it's just ridiculously complicated um and it's I feel been deliberately designed to be so anyway so I thought I'd give you that as an update so thank you for that to those of you that flagged that up and uh, I'll keep you posted on how I get on with that. Maybe I'll make another video about that. How to claim that money from UC when you've put the wrong amounts in. Okay, so I've had a message back via Universal Credits Journal that I need to make an appointment to present all my evidence for my claim. However, all I'm trying to do is claim back the interest payments that I declared as income. But instead of just having to present that, I need to present evidence of all my income in total, I presume since I started claiming, which was last September, 
and all the evidence of my expenses. Now what is particularly weird about this is that when you do your monthly claims, they ask you to fill in how much you've earned, but as one total amount. And they don't ask you for any evidence of what that income is. You just stick an amount in a box. And then you itemise your expenses, but you don't have to include any evidence. So, theoretically, you can pretty much make up anything you like for your monthly claim. But if you want to get any money back, you need to quite literally draw blood. I'm going to pursue this. Firstly, because it's quite a lot of money, it's £1,600, and I'd really like that back. Secondly, it makes good videos. <laughs> so if any of you out there are on universal credit or going through the process and maybe you've had a similar situation where you've made a mistake and you need to ask for some money back you may find this useful so they've made an appointment cancelled it made me another appointment that I can't make so I've gone back to them and listed the dates that I can't do and maybe they'll come up with a date that I can actually do I am running short of time because as I said before, my claim ends on the 21st of August and I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark that the date that that claim ends, I can't do anything. So we'll see what happens. Um, it should be interesting. So I need to get printing. One of the problems is that my income streams are all over the place. So some of it is really easy to produce evidence for. So, um, I've got the cleaning work, anything I earn through my online business, etc, etc. And most of the surveys are income. But, some survey sites, like I have the two sites where I earn Nectar points, they just appear in my Nectar account, or my Nectar card on the app. So, I don't know... How I'm supposed to produce that evidence? Because it also just appears as points, not as money. Two points is one penny. So I might produce all the evidence I can and they say, well, you haven't produced everything. Anyway, so I'm going to do what I can. It's going to be complicated because there's so much incoming coming in from all different places. And some income, like, for instance, coffee, where I get donations, you have the the gross amount on, on coffee, but then you have to go into PayPal to see the net amount because PayPal charges me fees to get that money out of coffee. So there's going to be an awful lot of ins and outs, and I'm going to be dragging a suitcase of paperwork by the looks of it. Serves them right. There's no reason why they need to see all the other ev all the other evidence of all the other income and all the other expenses when all I am asking for is the detailed uh, is the the money back for the interest and again this is just the making the system as difficult as possible to put you off now if it was a couple of hundred quid I probably wouldn't have bothered but as I say it's 1600 pounds and I would like it back my fault I know although you know, if every time I went to one of my work coach meetings they asked me to provide the actual evidence for all my income, they would have spotted my error. So I'll keep you posted on how that goes. Um, next update will be paperwork and then an appointment and then maybe somewhere down the line me getting money back. So, um... <laughs> fun times. So, <laughs> here is my updated pile of paperwork for the DWP, Universal Credit Review. They asked for every receipt, every invoice, they can have it. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I still can't get over that 
you have to itemise every expense for your claim, but not every different bit of income. And they don't challenge that at all unless you want some money back, in which case they want every single piece of paper. Fine, I've got the pieces of paper. Now they're going to have to sort through it all. They can't take any of this away. Most of this is originals, so they're going to have to sit there with me and go through it all. Um, some of it I've reprinted for them. Some of them they're going to have to photocopy it. One of the other problems, of course, is that I'm already working on two financial calendars. I have the January to December. I have the, um, the self-assessment year, the tax year, which is April to April. And then you have your UC one, your universal credit one, which is entirely dependent on the day that your claim starts. So mine runs from the 21st of the month to the 20th of the next month. So I now have three um, financial calendars that I have to work to at the moment. And of course, because the other two, I mean, all the brown envelopes are my tax records. So every time I get an invoice, every time I get a receipt, it goes into the envelope for the month and then I'm ready for self-assessment. And apart from the fact that it starts, the, the new tax year starts on the 6th of April, it pretty much runs month to month. That's how I run it. So that's fine. But because I'm having to do the UC one, which starts on the 21st of each month, I have to then separate out the chronological order of all those receipts. So what I've done, I've reprinted a whole bunch of them that they can have their own copies of because, frankly, I can't be bothered. And then the rest of it, they're going to have to photocopy in order and they're going to have to work it out for themselves because they're asking for more than they asked for in the first place when I was doing a claim. And I know that they're doing this to make my life as hard as possible so that I won't claim. But... I'm going to make them do the work because it's just ridiculous. I'm not asking to have my entire record reviewed. I'm not asking to have loads and loads of different aspects of money back. All I have done is claimed interest on my savings when I shouldn't have done. So I've got the savings information separately. So I've got proof of all my, all the savings I've declared, all the savings that have come in, so they can see where the problem is. They shouldn't have to... Uh, um, look at every single receipt from every single in, every single out to go against that. That's ridiculous. That's just to make the system as difficult as possible. The other problem that I'm finding is that because we are paperless now and because so many of the ways we work is on apps and different things work in different ways, it's really hard to get a proof of purchase on a lot of things or a proof of sale. So you're supposed to declare now things like eBay earnings and Vinted and Depop and Etsy and all these sorts of things and some of them are okay so eBay is easy to do. Etsy isn't too bad to do but you can't uh, ask for chronology for, for date orders in specific specifics so you can do your uh, you can print off your your Etsy fees and all that sort of thing month by month but if like for this if they want the month by month it's got to be from the 21st of the month to the 20th of the next month so I'm just putting in what's been paid for within those dates and that doesn't match up with Etsy records so they're going to have to work out for themselves where one payment starts and the other one ends. Vinted I have no proof at all for any of the sales that I've made that are a part of my business because um, I sell both personal stuff, that's where I've had a clean out personally, and also work related stuff, but I'm selling on one account. So, and you, you don't get invoices as proof of sale on Vinted. You don't get um, any sort of, there's no record, there's nothing you can print off. So I've just had to make a spreadsheet of ins and outs, which I've done anyway, and they're just going to have to take my word for it that that's what I've sold on Vinted. Um, it's just ridiculous, you know, they want us to declare this stuff as income, but they don't provide any way for us to be able to prove it, except by looking at an app. Now, it might be that the DWP can go to Vinted and say, show us records for so-and-so, but I can't prove it on my tax records. The only thing I can prove is that I've drawn the money down from Vinted into my bank account. 
but because not all the money is business related some of it is um, is personal stuff it doesn't all add up it's the same with things like my phone bill so I do a pay-as-you-go sim only contract it's month to month and you can't download invoices for paying for that every month because they don't do invoices for pay-as-you-go because it's only a 30-day contract so the only proof I've got of that is if I go into my bank account where they take the money from each month but that's maybe that's not enough maybe that's what not what they want so I've, I've literally done a screenshot from my account not on the app but on the website I've screenshot it and I've literally just printed off the screenshot at least it's got the company logo on it but it's incredibly they make everything so incredibly difficult it's amazing this country runs at all the, the bureaucracy and the paperwork that goes into things this would not be a problem for the universal credit if you had to itemize your income as well as your outgoings and even though I've itemized, itemized my outgoings they now want the proof that what I've claimed for is actually what I've claimed what I've spent so if that's the case why are you asking me in the first place if you don't believe me no wonder there's so much fraud it must be so incredibly easy to defraud universal credit when they ask you to declare your income and your expenses with no proof whatsoever and then they'll only ask you if something like this happens and you want to claim some of the money back because you recorded the wrong income because there was no way of them knowing what you were claiming for in the first place it's just the system is just an absolute joke so my appointment isn't until next month but it's um, going to be very soon after I get back from my next trip away to my parents and I wanted to be ready so I've separated out invoices I'm taking all my tax records as a backup in case there's anything missing which it no doubt will be and um, I'm just literally going to take everything with me because I know it's all in here it's just not necessarily in the right chronological order for them because their dates don't match up with any others um, I hope I make lots of work for them and they regret asking me um, it's their fault not mine I have the records they're just not in the same date order the system is a joke an absolute joke so I'm ready now for that meeting I'm going to post up this post now because there's quite a lot on it and then I will give you the update um, I'm not sure when that's going to be now I'm not sure when I'll be posting this up compared to the date of the actual meeting which will be in the middle of July so um, I'll keep you posted keep following me do subscribe if you're interested in the universal credit um, vlogs that I do because I will do them as and when it's necessary so something like this and I have done videos also about how to do claims some of the pitfalls that sort of thing um, the work coach meetings all that sort of stuff so I've got this one come this this one will, you're watching now there will be another one coming up which will be the update after the meeting there will probably be the result of that and then I'm guessing uh, a month after that which is the 21st of August my claim is going to come to an end I suspect because I've done the transitional year and I'm not eligible for regular universal credit unless they've changed the rules. So, that's that. I'll let you know how we get on.